The first case to come before the court is uh, State versus Hodges. And uh, each side will have 15 minutes, and I'm going to be reserved up to five. May it please the court, my name is Attorney Joseph F. Salzgeber on behalf of the defendant appellant Jesse Hodges. Um, this case offers a rather interesting fact pattern uh, wherein my client uh, Jesse Hodges and his wife um, encountered the alleged victim in the case um, at a car wash at Mr. DeSoto. Uh, my client was admittedly dressed up like a police officer. He had uh, an airsoft pellet gun on his person but never pointed that gun or used it to threaten uh, the victim, Mr. DeSoto. Uh, this matter arose uh, due to the fact that my client was jealous that his uh, now ex-wife uh, had maintained a plenty of fish account, a dating account, uh, from prior to their marriage and was being contacted by gentlemen on this. Uh, he contacted uh, a gentleman, a Mr. Udallis, who was texting his wife or contacting her via Plenty of Fish. Um, Mr. Udallis had indicated online to the wife that he was a firearm owner. Um, and they set up this meeting with the, the intent that my client was going to scare this man off, pretend to be a police officer, scare this man off from ever uh, contacting or attempting to date his wife again. And, and she cooperated in that endeavor. At the time, my client was rather intoxicated, uh, and they were to meet this Mr. Udallis uh, at another location, um, and then Mr. Hodges was going to then attempt to scare him away by indicating the wife was underage. Uh, she was 24 at the time. He is approximately 32 at this time. Uh, so there was somewhat of an age gap, and she did look young. Um, when he showed up um, and pretended to be an undercover police officer, it turns out that the, Mr. Udallis himself never showed up, but another man uh, by the name of DeSoto, uh, it was a big mix-up, he showed up. Um, and that was not something that was planned. Mr. DeSoto just happened to be there. Um, he submitted to Mr. Hodges based on the fact that he claimed to be a police officer, was dressed as a police officer, and admitted that. Um, I think it's a key point that the airsoft pistol was never pointed at uh, or used to threaten the victim, Mr. DeSoto, at all. Um, the encounter lasted some 45 to 50 minutes after Jesse Hodges realized that this is the wrong guy. Uh, this isn't the person that was contacting my wife. You get plenty of fish or text. Um, he learned through uh, his uh, so-called investigation that the gentleman had some firearms in the trunk of the vehicle. Um, and then my client formed the uh, intent to commit theft, theft by deception. He, uh, he asked the gentleman for $50 as a fee in order to let this matter go away. Um, so th this was something that was not planned from the beginning. This was something that uh, arose during the course of their encounter. And so was the firearm displayed prior to his request? Or the, the, prior to, to talking with the, with the victim in this case? Uh, the in, initially, when um, Mr. Hodges made the stop, the uh, victim, DeSoto, indicated he saw there was a police officer and that there was a airsoft pistol was out, and then he never saw that airsoft pistol again. It was holstered. The pellet gun was holstered. It was never pointed at or, or used to threaten Mr. DeSoto in any way. So he never was aware that the orange tip had been taken off of the airsoft pistol? No, he merely saw that he had a police officer uh, approaching him and submitted to a, what he thought was a lawful display of authority. I thought he had actually held the gun up to like the window of the car. Maybe I'm just no, I don't, I don't believe that's accurate. The, the, gun, the, gun was, the gun was holstered when, when there was contact between Airsoft pistol was in a holster, was never, um, never displayed or used to threaten Mr. Hodges, uh, Mr. DeSoto um, at that point. Um, 
you know, given the, the eye. It says in the state's brief that transcript pages 33 35, the soda looked up and saw a man with what appeared to be a hand that was wrong and pointed at his head. Is that incorrect? I mean, um, we'll the, read the transcript. Right. But that's right. kind of the, maybe a critical point. He indicated that he was never threatened. And that, that's really why this was a matter that went to bench trial. Um, Mr. DeSoto indicated he was never threatened. Um, he saw that there was this, this airsoft pistol that was uh, displayed at the beginning and then holstered right away, and then he was never threatened with that. And that's, I believe, why uh, Mr. Campbell, the defense attorney, decided to waive a jury, uh, recommend that Mr. Hodges waive a jury and go to a bench trial. Was because we were really arguing the elements. There was no physical harm, attempt to commit physical harm, or threat of physical harm made to Mr. DeSoto by Jesse Hodges. And once you don't have that, you're dealing with a theft by deception situation uh, where, based on his own testimony, DeSoto only gave the money to avoid uh, any problems uh, which he thought he was going to have with the police uh, at that time. Um, if there's no robbery, then ergo there can be no kidnapping. Um, and the personation of a police officer, if there's not an underlying felony being committed, that also becomes a misdemeanor. So that, that is our argument that these matters, though criminal in nature, were misdemeanor theft by deception and misdemeanor personating of a police officer. Um, I would ask to reserve the balance of my time. I'm Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for Medina County, representing the state of Ohio. Uh, you forgive me, I didn't write this brief. It was my predecessor who did. So I didn't have access to the transcripts. So those uh, places in the transcript that I cite will be merely from his brief. Um, as to the point of uh, what Mr. DeSoto thought was being pointed at him, uh, from the brief, uh, DeSoto actually described the firearm with, as what he thought was a Beretta 92, which is a semi-automatic pistol. So those were, that was his belief uh, when Mr. Hodges was outside the vehicle pointing the gun at him. So from his perspective, uh, it was an operable firearm. Uh, Again, the fact, the proposition that DeSoto recognized it as an airsoft pistol belies the fact that he thought that this was a genuine police officer also. Police officers don't carry airsoft pistols. And DeSoto is obviously familiar with firearms. He had a trunk full of them, from what I understand. Um, In terms of the second proposition of law here uh, regarding uh, Ms. Hodges and, and whether she, uh, she properly waived spousal privilege, when I read this, I'm, this is kind of an arcane area of the law and I had a difficult time finding a lot of law here uh, that's, that's very current. Uh, I believe the most recent Supreme Court case uh, says pretty specifically that uh, that the waiting spouse uh, needs to do that on the record. And needs to do what? Needs to do that. Needs to submit that waiver on the record. I don't see anything about there having to be a signed waiver. Uh, however, I think in this case that there was sufficient evidence uh, to support uh, Mr. Hodges' conviction aside from uh, Ms. Hodges' testimony. Uh, from what I saw, <coughs> the search warrant that was executed on uh, Ms. Hodges' home, they found a black airsoft pistol, uh, they found a badge, 
they found a police scanner with the batteries hanging out, which uh, uh, Mr. DeSoto described at the scene that Hodges had dropped the radio and that the batteries were hanging out. Uh, then Hodges himself consented to a search of his Toyota vehicle, which Mr. Soto described as being at the scene as well. And a search of that vehicle uncovered an iPhone, a early baseball hat, and leather gloves. Then Mr. Udali's telephone, which was the individual that they had first hoped to encounter uh, when they went, uh, went out to the gas station, uh, provided screenshots and messages between your dailies and Christina Hodges. <clears throat> so that shows that Hodges was in the area, that, that his, his story about why he initially went out was, was accurate, and, uh, and that when he came upon uh, the victim, Mr. DeSoto, uh, although he recognized that DeSoto probably wasn't the person he was looking for, he still took DeSoto's telephone and dialed the number of his mother's residence on DeSoto's phone just to verify that it wasn't DeSoto who his wife had been communicating with. So that was after he extricated DeSoto from the, from the vehicle. So that also puts, obviously puts uh, Mr. Hodges at the scene and in contact with Mr. DeSoto. And I think all this he admitted. Um, there was also video from the car wash that, uh, that Christina DeSoto observed and acknowledge that it was her and Jesse in the video. And I don't think that that be, can be construed as uh, privileged information. Communicated it to, you know, whomever was uh, going to see those videos. If the court were to find that the 
uh, robbery was in fact committed. I would ask that this court uh, reverse this matter and remand with instructions to vacate the felony convictions um, and impose the, the lesser included misdemeanors. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you both for your presentation to the court. The court will take the matter under advisement and issue a written opinion that will be sent to both sides as well as we'll release it on our website. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a good day.